All right, Donna, <laughs> welcome to the show. So grateful thank to you, have Millie. you here. Yes, thank you for being thank here. You. I um kind of want to see where this goes today. I'm I think as I mentioned when we were chatting earlier, I'm in like like page 150 of your book Original Wisdom, which is Original Wisdom Harness the Power of the Authentic You. Um here's an interesting question that came to me when I was prepping for today. What is your favorite part of your book that you wrote? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Wow. And you can you can say skip if you want to because I know we didn't prepare for this. No, I I definitely have an answer for this. Um okay. chapter 12. Mm. And chapter 12 in the audio book. Okay. And I'll tell you why because I narrated the audio book and um in chapter 12 I am sharing about a really profound experience that my husband and I shared in Glastonbury, England. Mm. Um, that was really around a past life recall that we both shared like simultaneously while we were there. And as I'm reading, which, you know, chapter 12 sort of ties it all up with a bow and the chapter intros that I have throughout the entire book sort of all come together in chapter 12 and you have this aha of the divine feminine and this mm -hmm. aha of to use your words awakening our magnificent soul mm -hmm. and that was this really a visceral experience of me awakening you know my mm -hmm. magnificent soul mm -hmm. and as I read it all of that emotion came back to the surface for me and wow. I left it. I left it in the audio and you know, that that's just the way it is. So I cry myself through chapter 12 I love and it. whatever people think about that is fine with me because I was sharing the truth of the moment mm. as it was happening for me. Mm. Wow. I'm glad I asked that question because me too. Because <laughs> <laughs> I got well when you were just saying I could just imagine like I got chills through my body and I always think that like that's God's talk God talking to me. And so I'm sure I haven't heard the audiobook, but I'm sure that was very powerful. And then to leave it up and not be judgmental, self-judgmental. And oh, I can only imagine that um were any of your per perfectionist parts or control parts coming up after? <laughs> Oh, bless them. That would be, I know that would be me. That's, you know, I, I have um, a very visceral experience with spirit mm. and I know when I'm sort of working with my ego and through my ego mm. and when spirit is working through me mm. and when spirit is working through me, it's much easier to be less judgmental and really not judgmental at all, because as I'm experiencing it, I'm in a different place. Mm. So um, it's funny. And I'm just like being shown to share this, that as I recorded the narrative of that book, it was really important to me that I was centered and really like channeling that energy of loving through me. Mm -hmm. And you can tell when I'm not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so true right mm -hmm. yeah so um yeah I have a lot of perfectionist judgmental parts I'm a type one on the Enneagram so sometimes <laughs> it's really like self-abuse yeah for sure absolutely yeah that would definitely be my experience is the like you're saying, the ego and the perfectionist and control parts coming up. Um, but that's beautiful. Wow. I love that authenticity and and the channeling of, the, of love and God. Um, I love the way that you talk about this because I have the same, like similar feelings. I don't know if I've ever, ever like publicly talked about it, but um, like when I know kind of I'm in the zone um, or in, you know, in just a channel through of spirit or was like original wisdom. Um, mm -hmm. How did you get here? Because I know it, this, this doesn't just for everyone listening, like if, if you've ever wanted to like feel expansive or 
have this major transformation, um, I think it takes like, I'd love to hear your story. I know people would as well, but it takes time, you know, it takes practice, um, to be this calm and to be this, this, um, clear and, um, Mm -hmm. to have this knowing, how did you get here? Yeah. Thank you so much. You know, um, the most important thing to me in my life is being clear. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting, right? Mm -hmm. Like our intentions, our goals, our aspirations, they change as we continue to evolve on this path and being clear and staying clear. Mm -hmm. It's a daily practice. It is an absolute daily practice. And the way that I think about it and, you know, how did I get here? It's like such a big question. And I'm going to answer it from an, from an inside place instead of the outside place. Mm -hmm. The work that I do with my clients and the work that I've done with myself is really clearing the blocks to the awareness Mm -hmm. of the love that is right here, right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as you know, working with trauma, Mm -hmm. that is a big, heavy block that gets put in between our, our true self and our awareness and what's happening in our life. And so it is a constant practice. Mm -hmm. And I've done a great deal of the inner work to remove the illusions and the misunderstandings and the misinterpretations and the misidentifications and all of the lies that we tell ourselves. And coming into cooperation and resonance and alignment with that Mm -hmm. and then being able to be that honest with Mm ourselves, right? Like, which is not easy that this has been a story that I've told my whole life. And this story that I've told my whole life is now part of my identity. Mm -hmm. It's part of my persona. And what if it's not even real? Mm -hmm. And it's coming to that truth and loving ourselves through that awareness. Mm -hmm. And it's in that love that these things dissolve and they fall away. And the more that these things fall away, the more we are left with our true essence. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I see like, it's a, it's a formula in my Mm -hmm. mind, you know, it's a formula in my mind. The more we remove the gunk and the yuck Mm -hmm. and the yeah, the heavy stuck energy. And I think things like trauma get crystallized and hardened in our energetic field. And so as we can dissolve that through the process of love, Mm -hmm. it melts away and we're left with our natural radiance. Mm -hmm. I love that. So true. Um, I can feel the love on this side. So that's good. <laughs> Thank you. You radiate love. Um, I love, this is what I really have been for me, what I'm in, not really deep, but the, something that I've been thinking about a lot is this idea of we have these blocks, like we have these traumas and we have these really sticky you know, things. And I feel like if people can just slow down, we can feel it. Like I feel it now, um, pretty quickly when, when before I would, you know, try to push it away and we can talk about that too, how we tend to do that. Because, you know, a lot of your book is about like, about, you know, pushing away the frustration and the anger and all that stuff. Um, but I love what you said because it is a, a constant practice and I think parts of me, and I think even like people maybe in our field or on Instagram or whatever, (laughs) will just talk about trauma like it's a one and done heal and mm. be gone mm. um it's a one and Wouldn't done that be nice yeah it would be nice <laughs> <laughs> it would be nice but that is absolutely not <laughs> what I've experienced and I think a part of me latches <laughs> on to that idea of um if this is 
gone from me, then I'll be finally be okay. And I think that's a very young part of me. Um, but I just want to say, like, I just, I want to point out like the, the idea of this being a constant practice, because that has absolutely been my journey too. Yeah. Yeah. I really acknowledge what you're sharing and it is absolutely true. And I think sometimes that's the danger of getting on a path to transformation is that we buy into the misbelief that there is going to be a destination that mm-hmm. we're going to arrive to. Mm-hmm. And it it really isn't. You know, we want to believe like, oh, one day I'm going to get fully enlightened and then all my problems are going to be solved. And it's just such a myth. Mm-hmm. And um, what I love about spiritual psychology, which was innovated and created by Drs. Ron and Mary Holnick at the University of Santa Monica, is that it's the, a set of tools that empower us to know how to work with ourself. Mm. And I work with myself every day. Mm-hmm. I work with myself every day, right? And sometimes it's easier than other days. Um, but if there's a trigger or an activation or a trauma that is being revisited, this is part of our soul's learning journey. Mm. It is part of why the soul took embodiment and what the soul is here to grow through. Mm -hmm. And it provides us with our spiritual curriculum, Mm. which the ego can't make sense out of that. And it's difficult for the ego to make sense out of that, but because the ego is trapped in judgment, right? Mm -hmm. Everything is good or bad, right or wrong, black or white, up or down, right? The ego lives in this world of polarity. Mm -hmm. But from the lens of the soul, the soul is looking through the lens of love and sees everything with Mm -hmm. neutrality. Mm -hmm. sees everything with neutrality and so it's really only interested in the experience Mm -hmm. and I have found it so liberating and freeing in my own life to be able to look through this lens at my own life and make some sense Mm -hmm. out of the difficult experiences that have occurred in my own life. Right. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. The ego is tricky sometimes. (laughs) All the time. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. For sure. (laughs) Um, What I love too about your story is you and I had like, I feel like a very similar type of, of breakthrough and awakening. Um, and I'd love for you to kind of share that with the audience. Um, everyone, you know, the listeners know kind of about my story of basically, you know, what you write in the book about, you know, doing like for me, it was doing all these things that I was told I was supposed to do, being great at them, being amazing at them, making the money, the car and all the things. And then realizing that this, like, this is bullshit. <laughs> like, this is not my path. Like, this, <laughs> I've been fed lies. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'd, I'd love for you to share that with the audience, if you don't mind, kind of when you started this journey. Yeah. Um, well, I had always been a spiritual seeker since a young, young age and have some really profound recall moments of spiritual experiences that I didn't know were spiritual experiences then. But, you know, this has always been in me, part mm-hmm. of my path. Mm. love for metaphysics and spirituality and psychology. And it's so funny. Like I think when I was 17, 18 years old, I knew exactly who I was. (laughs) I knew exactly who I was. And then I followed, you know, the guidance of all of the people who loved me, Mm -hmm. right. To go to school and earn the degree and yes. get the job and yes. marry the guy and da, 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 da. And I turned 44 and that's how old I was when my father died. Mm. So suddenly 
I had this huge wake up call. I was like, holy shit, what is my life about? What am Mm -hmm. I doing here? Mm -hmm. I'm on this conveyor belt. And that was really how it felt, right? It was like this monotony of the autoplay. Like it was, Mm -hmm. my life was just a big rerun. (laughs) (laughs) And as it was this rerun, my soul was like dimming. It was going out. It was quiet. It was dying. It was a death, you know? Mm -hmm. And I went crying to a psychic and said to her, you know, I got to find my purpose, (laughs) which I had done a million times before. And this woman, she said, Donna, they're spelling it out for me. Spiritual psychology. I said, what in the fuck is spiritual (laughs) psychology? (laughs) And she didn't answer my question, but she said, there's three universities that teach a program. And she gave me the name of two of the universities. And then we got distracted talking about something else. And I went home and consulted the other Oracle and I Googled it. (laughs) And I very quickly found my way to the University of Santa Monica which happened to be an hour up the road from where I was living. And they offered a weekend program that was a master's in spiritual psychology with an emphasis in consciousness, health, and healing. So here I am in the hotel business. I am a marketing executive in hospitality. At the time I was working for the Ritz Carlton Mm -hmm. at all the shiny things. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, And I thought, what in the hell am I going to do with a master's degree in spiritual psychology? It didn't make any sense. None. It didn't make any sense. And it was a commitment, right? It was a financial Mm -hmm. investment. It was a time commitment. And my ego put up a whole big laundry list of excuses, big, you know, 101,000 reasons why not to do it. Mm -hmm. And this one admissions counselor, bless her, who like handled all of my objections for months and months and months. <laughs> Veronica, if you hear this, thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, she said to me, Donna, why don't you just come for one weekend mm-hmm. and see what happens? Mm-hmm. Right? Like, a little willingness, Mm -hmm. just a little willingness. And that one weekend changed my entire life. Mm. It's amazing. So um, the program was a journey into myself. It was a journey of peeling away all of those false layers, Mm. all of the bullshit, Mm -hmm. all of the untruths. It was seen through all of the things that we have been taught, that we have been told, that we have been sold, Mm -hmm. right? And slowly, slowly, you know, layer by layer, I began peeling away the things that weren't true, the things that weren't really me, the things that were out of alignment Mm. with my true self, my true essence. And a year into the program, and I, I actually ended up going for five consecutive years because after I got, you know, the master's, then I had to get the coaching certification, then I had to get the facilitation. Like I had to, I had to do it all. Um, (laughs) so it was a long journey Mm -hmm. and a year, a year into it, I stepped down from my corporate role without a clue or a plan. Um, I had a, what I can only describe as an awakening, right? Mm -hmm. I was given divine guidance Mm -hmm. and like crystal clarity about my life 
on an airplane. Thank mm-hmm. you very much. <laughs> <laughs> on my way to the Ritz Carlton Global Leadership Conference, mind you. <laughs> and I'm curled up in a ball, like sobbing on the airplane and praying that none of my coworkers are going to like see what this, what is going on. But the woman who got on that plane to go to that conference was very, very different from the woman who got mm. off of that plane. Yeah. So the, all of that is in the book. And I had just an absolute clear knowing mm-hmm. that even though I had no idea what I was going to do and I have, you know, I have to earn the paycheck to, to pay the mortgage. Mm-hmm. So there wasn't just this, you know, financial blanket of security that was supporting me through this. This was a big deal that mm-hmm. I walked away from um, my direct deposit paycheck mm-hmm. and my very big quarterly bonus that was about to get paid out. Mm-hmm. But I had never been so sure about anything. Mm-hmm. And this is what my next book is actually going to be about which is called spiritual ambition, which is sort of this, this inner momentum that we get from our soul that is Mm. continually directing us towards our intellecty, the fullest realized expression of who we've come here to be. And one of my theories in this is that it's required that we make these leaps. Mm. because I believe there's this magic elixir that happens in the air of the leap. And we want, our ego wants to plan and strategize and have the exit strategy. We want to know how long it's going to take. What are all the steps? And our ego wants all of those things so that it can feel safe and secure and When we are willing to take a risk, to make a leap, there are inner gifts that are born inside of us that can only come through making that leap. Mm. Yeah. Thank you for receiving that. <laughs> I just like, I have this so clear in my consciousness and mm. I'm working on how do I articulate this and explain this in a way that makes sense. And like, why do people even care? You yeah. know, why do people even care? Because this life can be so rich and yummy and mm-hmm. rewarding and delicious and fulfilling mm-hmm. and with meaning and purpose mm-hmm. and we have our attention sometimes on the opposite end, the opposite end of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that with me. You're a beautiful soul shining. Um, (laughs) So beautiful. Thank you. I think you're just looking in the mirror. Uh, Oh, thank you. (laughs) I'll take that. Uh, Thank you. Um, Okay. There are a few things that that I really, it's required to take the leap. I think, one of my favorite things about conversations for in this, in this container, in this medium is the sole reason that I started this podcast in 2018 was because conversations like this did not happen. It didn't like, did not happen in my childhood. Didn't happen. You know, with my family didn't happen with friends. Um, there was no other way than the path that was set before me. That was not mine. And one of the reasons I really love having these conversations is my, it's my hope that like one, one person listens to this and they realize that they're not, they're not Lily, they're not Donna, but they, they have their own journey and their own path and their own self-expression and their own purpose. Purpose is a very bloated word. So I'm just going to say that there and we could talk about that. Yeah. Um, but just like the the just the knowing mm-hmm. of that there is there's a different way there's a different path and we have the ability just like you know just like I did just like you did to really start to like 
to listen. And if you can't listen and you can't hear then make space, like, you know, do like the healing and the, um, those blocks that you talked about. Um, it's, I don't know, like there's, I think, I don't know, there's a revolution coming, I think, but, um, oh, proud to be part of, pr- yeah, yeah proud, to be, proud to be part of it. Well, you've been in the game longer than I have. So you probably, you, you know, you, you've probably seen it, but, um, yeah, I just want to point out that like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm unique, but I'm not special. Donna, it's probably would agree with that as well. And that if someone's listening to this, um, we all have the ability to, and it's hard, right? Like we have, this is what something that I struggle with today, honestly, which is I have this, this calling in myself and, um, this connection with, with my version of God, the God inside me. And it is hard because, I've, you know, I still have to pay bills. I still have to be stay safe. I still have to, you know, um, do the sales calls or the marketing, you know, and all that stuff. And there are real life things that need to get be done. And I think that that that's the hard part. I think for most people is is that people can just throw up their hands, mm-hmm. or that's the ego. I don't know what you would say about this, but throw up their hands and be like, "Well, I can't do what they do. Like, I have kids to support. Like, I don't have any time." And I think it just takes these, like, what you're talking about with your story, these little pieces of willingness, like these little mm-hmm. tiny bits of willingness, um, which was like for me and my kind of awakening was what I always say, like my higher self and. God conspired, like they, they held hands and like knocked me on the shoulder. And it was like, this is not it. Um, yeah. So I just wanted to point that out. Anything you'd like to add? To yeah, that? no. Oh my <laughs> gosh. I love this. Um, oh, how do I want to go about this? The way, you know, it's easy to, uh, make our ego, the bad guy. Mm-hmm. And, and idealize our higher self or our soul. And I think it's really important that we don't do that. Mm-hmm. What I think is important and supportive is when our ego can be in service to our soul's mission. Mm, that's good. And I like to think about our purpose really as our expression. I love that. I wrote that down. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Our purpose is our expression. And so what are you here to express? And you can express that in the corporate arena, right? Paying the bills, doing the work in whatever you're doing. And this really is the revolution that is uprising around the globe because there's women like you and women like me, and there are women all over the globe Mm -hmm. that are suddenly awakening Mm -hmm. to the importance of conversations like this, the Mm -hmm. importance of slowing down and connecting, the Mm -hmm. importance of care and compassion Mm -hmm. with one another, the importance of willingness, Mm -hmm. the realization that the way it has been getting done for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds Mm -hmm. of years, it's not working. Mm -hmm. It's not working. We are being invited to to do it a different way. Mm -hmm. And so when we can engage the wisdom of our higher self, the true knowing, our original wisdom, when we can engage that in every facet of our life, it's really the presence that we bring to whatever it is we're doing. Exactly. And it doesn't matter. You know, people I think, mm-hmm. and I thought this for a long, 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 for a couple of decades, thought that my purpose was a job. Mm-hmm. Right? Hey, guess what? Sorry, it's not. It's not <laughs> a job. I like to think that all of humanity is on the hero's journey, you Mm -hmm. know, Joseph Campbell's Mm -hmm. hero's journey. And if there's this grand destination in the sky, it's love. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And so we're all moving towards that awareness that our true self, our true nature, our true essence is this drop of divinity, Mm -hmm. the drop of all that is, Mm -hmm. right? And each one of us is the expression of that. Mm -hmm. And in my book, I use this analogy that some people come to this life to be an apple and some people come to this life to be an orange. And I can spend my life coveting the orange and wishing I was an orange and wanting to be an orange and, you know, pretending that I'm an orange. But the truth is I came here to be an apple. And so when I can get busy loving my appleness, Mm -hmm. then things begin to align themselves in my life in such a way that I am now in harmony with the higher part of my being. Mm -hmm. And this is really an overarching intention that we have our thoughts, our feelings, and our behaviors all in cooperation with our soul's highest mission. And our soul's highest mission is love. Mm -hmm. Love it. So true. So true. I say that a lot too about um, our, when our behaviors line up with our thoughts, our feelings, and our beliefs. That's huge. Um, hard to do, but it's it possible. is. <laughs> and I mean, when I was working for the Ritz Carlton, um, I mean, I knew mm-hmm. that I didn't want to be there any longer. I knew that I was deeply unfulfilled and I was deeply happy, mm-hmm. but I. I was working with a framework, my mm-hmm. belief system, mm-hmm. that that was all there was, mm-hmm. right? And I really believed that that was all there was. So here I am physically marching off to this role every day, but inside my thoughts were, gosh, I really hate this. And my <laughs> feelings were, you know, all of the things that we know about the Mm -hmm. sadness, the Mm -hmm. depression, the Mm -hmm. suppression, Mm -hmm. the contraction. Mm -hmm. And that resulted in a breast cancer diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Don't you know? Wow. Yeah. So, you know, when we're that far out of balance in our life, it's going to materialize in the physical world in some way, you know, and this is where we see parts of our lives reflecting back to us and feeling broken, if I can use that word, right? Because we we end up with these imbalances in our relationships, Mm -hmm. in our finances, Mm -hmm. in our health, Mm -hmm. in our careers, because there's something that's not lined up inside of ourselves. These are clues. Mm -hmm. These are clues. These are beautiful gifts that our soul is communicating to us. If we could see it that way. Mm. Yes. All of that. (laughs) I'm just (laughs) dropping in and listening to you. So I I know my listeners are enjoying it as well. It's such a pleasure. (laughs) Thank you. Um, yeah, I can feel the radiance of, of God and spirit. It's amazing. Mm, thank um, you. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, so I wanted to kind of close up today. Um, is there anything that you're working on right now? You, you have a second book coming out. Um, yeah. if you don't, I'd love to hear about that. And then also, if you don't mind sharing where the listeners can find you and anything you're working on, that would be amazing. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, well, they can find me at DonnaBond.com. And I just launched, I'm really excited about this, um, an online self-guided coaching journey. Oh, nice. And everything that's in it is based on my book, Original Wisdom, Harness mm. the Power of the Authentic You. But the journey is called Empower the Authentic You. Mm. And it's really about making the switch from deriving our power from things that are outside of us, right? The career, the house, mm-hmm. the relationship, mm-hmm. the money in the bank account and beginning to source 
the real power from this inside place. And um, I'm a little bit like, wow, I can't believe I actually completed this. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I hear you with that. <laughs> yeah, because it's been, I have been in one way or another teaching that material mm-hmm. for the past eight years. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it was like a really big ass lofty goal mm-hmm. to think that I was going to be able to get it all tied up with a bow and, and be able to make it so easily accessible to people. And what I love about it is it's on your own time, right? Mm-hmm. Like you get to go at your own pace and the videos of me teaching inside mm-hmm platform are they're very bite-sized right so they're small they're little you can kind of digest as much or as little as you want and I think it's better than bad tv yeah, I'm just for saying. Real. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's the name of that course empower the authentic you empower so you can just go to empower the authentic you.com okay cool yeah. I'll put all that in the show notes uh, I really appreciate your time you're amazing thank you so much mm-hmm. for shining your light here and on the podcast I appreciate you. Thank you, Lily, for having me. It's really been my honor to be with you. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you.